Okay, so I've already drawn the problem on the board. Um, the idea is that we have two different wires of different length and different thicknesses hooked up to a battery. We want to find the electric field in both wires. We want to find the conventional current in both wires. Okay, so let's start with the most important thing, and that is the two things that are true. The two things that are true are this, delta V equals zero. If I, if I take the change of potential around any loop, when there's only one loop, it has to be zero. Okay. And the other thing that is true is that I1 equals I2. Because here I have some current in this region right here. We'll call that uh, I1. And then here's I2. And they have to be the same. In the transient state, if the current's not the same, I get charge buildup. And this is, has to be, uh, I'm sorry, in the steady state, we have to have the current to the same. So let's start with their loop equation. Let's start right here. If I go around this way, I know that I can get an electric field going that way, E1, and I can get an electric field going this way, E2. So if I start and I integrate E dot DL around the whole thing, I'll start right here and go across, I get e, the EMF of the battery. So if I go from here to there, I get EMF. So I get EMF, and then I get this length. It's a constant electric field in the same direction as the wire, so I get, but it's going, if I'm integrating in the same direction, E dot DL, remember, delta V is 0.1 to 2, negative E dot DL. So these are in the same direction, but there's a negative sign there, so I get negative E1, L1, and then I have to integrate around here, I get negative E2, L2 equals 0. So that's one equation. I can't solve for E1 and E2 because I only have one equation. However, I can use this equation. I can say um, the currents are the same. And I can write the current I1 is equal to Q in A1 U E1. So it's the charge carrier, charge, the charge carrier density the cross-sectional area of the wire, the electron mobility, and the electric field. And I've labeled this as A1 because A1 is different than A2. And this would be equal to I2, so Q in A2 U E2. Well, oh, there's an N. That's an N. And everything cancels except for the A's and the E's, so I get A1 E1 equals A2. E2, A2, E2. Uh, let's solve this for E1. It's going to be E2, A2 over A1. But I'm actually given the diameter in the problem. So let's write this as the area is going to be uh, pi r squared is the diameter. Um, so I'm going to have to convert these to meters. I'm going to have to square them and all that stuff. But everything cancels since I have a ratio. So this is really just E2, D2 squared over D1 squared. I don't even have to convert the units because whatever units they are, they cancel. Okay. But the area is proportional to the diameter squared. So Now if I put that in up here, I get uh, EMF minus E1, which is this, E2, D2 squared, D1 squared, L1 minus E2 L2 equals 0. Uh, so I can solve this for E2. I'll write this as EMF equals E2 times D2 squared D1 squared L1 minus L2. So E2 is going to be equal to EMF over D2 squared D1 squared L1 minus L2. Okay. Now, that is 1.5 volts. I know the diameters, the length. Now, that one I do have to have in uh, meters. And this is given it in uh, centimeters. Okay, so let me go ahead and plug my values. So here I have L1 is 20 centimeters, L2 is 15, D1, D2 is 0.1 millimeter, D2 is 0.2 millimeters. Let me just put that in my calculator right here on my computer. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. Just don't want you to panic. But I know you want a number. 
So I'm going to get a number for u. Okay, so I get uh, EMF 1.5 volts divided by D2, which is going to be uh, 0.2 divided by 0.1, all of that squared. And then I have to multiply by L1, which is 0.2 centimeters. And then I have to subtract L1, which is 0.15. And I get 2.31. See, I'm back. So E2 equals 2.31 volts per meter. Now I can get E1 down here. It's just going to be E2 times that ratio. So if I just say 2.31 times 0.2, let's see times d2 squared, which is 0 0.1. 0 0.1 squared divided by 0 0.2 squared. And I get 0 0.58. Okay, so let's just double check over here. This says that I have a greater electric field here. And that's going to have to be true, because what happens is since I have a smaller cross-sectional area, I'm going to have to have a higher drift velocity to have the same current. So a higher drift velocity would mean a greater electric field. Okay, now I need to solve for the current. Uh, I can just plug in here. I know A1, I'm going to have to actually convert the diameter to meters, and I'm going to have to convert uh, everything else to be okay. But then if I have a value of U equals 6 times to the negative fifth uh, for U and 7 times 10 to the 28th for n, and then q would be 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Then I have to plug that in there, and I'm not going to do it because I'm tired. Okay, but you can do that if you want.